Greetings and welcome to Godot Pirate Trader. I'm your instructor Greg Moss. In this course we're going to make an exciting pirate trading game using the Godot game engine. It uses a scripting language much like Python. It's a relatively new game engine compared to many game engines like Unity or Unreal. Uh, it really just, uh, when version 3 came out, has got the attention now of serious game developers. So we're going to jump in and start making this game. It's going to be fun. If you are not familiar with the Taipan game, just go to check the game out, play through it a little bit, so you know what kind of game we're building here. But to give you an idea of what your actual game will look like, have our cash. We have our goods that we can buy. I'm going to buy 15 general goods and hit buy. We see the cash go down. Then let's go to Manila. We have a pirate battle, which we can fight and win. And you can see when we get to Manila, our general goods are at $15, so we can sell them. So we have a, let's go ahead and sell them all off here. And now we're at $340, so we have profited. Let's go to Nagasaki. And oh well, it's even more now, and we can't afford that. So, oh, we you know we wouldn't want to buy at twelve, and arms are expensive. Let's go back to Hong Kong and buy more of the general goods at ten, and we'll buy some more. Let's go to Manila. Now we have a pirate battle fighting, and you can see our ship health going down here as we fight, and we still have some ship health left. Let's go and sell these 10 now. And we got $400. Let's go back to Hong Kong. Ah, the price has changed now. So we have random price changes there. And everything is expensive. Oh, we had a big pirate battle. Let's fight and see. And we lost and our ship sank. So that gives you a little overview of the kind of game that you're going to be building. And this is still an introductory to this game and a prototype. And we're going to be continuing to add new functionality there's still a lot more to see here to this game uh, than just this little prototype here so here we got a create new project i'm assuming that you've got godot installed and at least you can get there you can see that i'm running the 3.06 stable version here off of steam so it's a pretty standard version easy to get we have a new project window up and i'm going to put in for our name pirate godot pirate trader and just like that I can click create folder and create an edit and this will create our project Godot is really fast look how quick it's up and ready to go I can switch from 3d to 2d because we're going to be using the 2d engine for this pirate trading game now uh, Godot has a lot of cool user interface features. That's one of the advantages really for this type of game uh, the Godot engine is really good for. So we're going to see quickly how we can set up our interface for our pirate trading game. Over here on the right is a scene tab and I'm going to click this little plus to add a node to our scene. And When I click it it lets us search for nodes and I can type in panel here. There's a lot of nodes that you can look through there I would encourage you to explore but we're just going to use the panel for now and click create and you can see up here in the top left corner it's created a panel we're going to drag it out and make it bigger just like that and you can see up here on the right it's named panel now I don't want to name it panel I'm just going to call it I'm going to call it main so this is like the main root for our game and they actually do call this a root node and there's only one of them at the top of the scene now I'm not going to go deep into all the different little interface elements there's so many people to make really long like 20 hour courses on every little aspect of the interface and things uh, in all this but I'm going to get right into just making the game uh, and in a pirate trading game the most important thing the very first thing that I think you want to worry about is the money so we're going to right click on our main here add a child node and add a label so I can type in our search label here to bring up a label for our money and you can see once again it's way up here in the corner I can drag it out here so I can see it a little better I can use my mouse to scroll in so it's a little easier to see and you don't see anything in here for your text yet because over here on the right in the inspector we haven't provided anything in the text yet so I'm gonna come in here and just say cash colon dollar sign and I'm just gonna put 
250 in brackets. I, I put the 250 so I know when I look at this that I haven't loaded that out of a variable yet, that it's just a placeholder. It's just a visual cue for me. Now, Godot out of the gate just uses a standard font like this, and you have to actually load a font in, and that's something we'll look at in another lecture. And I actually have a preview lecture in my other course that shows how to do that, how to load a font in. But for now, we're just going to keep this font as it is because it's a good placeholder for us. And I'm going to show you now in this very first lecture how we can load this out of a variable. And um, let's go ahead and make one more label. So I'm going to name this label cache label so that we know it's for cache. I'm going to make one more label. We're going to call it or pick the label here and this one I'm gonna call the firm label and you'll see that I accidentally made the node from within the cache label node so it nested it down well we can just pick this node up and drag it back out like that to get it so that it's no longer nested under the cache label and you can also reorder nodes this way in your hierarchy so now I got my firm label here I'm going to drag it up here, and we're just going to have a firm name up here. Firm name. And there's an alignment property here. So it all makes sense. It should be pretty easy if you've used any kind of game engine before that you select an object. The inspector lets you see the properties of the object that's selected. You manipulate them here in your scene, and you select them over here. So let's go ahead now and see how we can load these out of variables now instead of just having them as placeholders so to do this we're going to come up here to our main node up here on the right is a little script icon we can click click it and it'll say attach node script and you'll see that the default language is GD script there's a couple other ones in here but we're just going to stick with GD script for now and click create and it brings us up the GD script editor here, the IDE, so it's got an integrated IDE. You'll see that it gives us a lot of comments here, as well as one function that actually has a command in, in here for pass. And pass just means it's just going to keep running. And so it needs this to actually do something in the, re in the ready. So this will run automatically whatever's inside of here when your game starts up. Now, what we're going to do is create variables for our cache and our firm name and it says right here class member variables go here for example and it gives us two perfect examples I can come here with this var a and get rid of this pound sign so get rid of the comments and instead say var cache equals 250 and instead of var b equal test var comment it out we'll have var firm name equals pirate go do Godot pirate trader just like that now this sets up the variables and we can print them out so I'm gonna get rid of this comment here and say print cache and I can say print firm name so again very Python right here uh, the only thing that's a little different in Python is you do have to define your variables and that they are typed here so it knows that's an integer by the fact that we're assigning it an integer value so let's go ahead and click run now and it tells you here that the scene has never been saved so we hit yes and we can take the default file name main just like that and hit save and it'll run and you can see down here in our output in the lower left here we have a 250 for where our cache got printed out and the Godot pirate trader firm name variable where it got printed out so it printed them out in the output of course we haven't updated the labels yet so that's what we're gonna do right now so instead of printing cache here let's go ahead and update the cache label now we can reference the objects here are nodes we can reference these nodes with a shortcut with a dollar sign in front of our label name like that or I should say our node name and so I can say cache and notice how it, it's automatically filling in with IntelliSense here it sees the node cache label and I can hit tab to accept it and I can just say dash text equals and I could just say cache but that wouldn't work let's 
go ahead and do the firm name first. So if I say firm label dot text equals firm name, and I'm going to comment this out for now. We'll do this one first. Firm label dot text. So we're referencing the property text in the firm label. So if I click on this and I mouse over text, you'll see that it says property text there. So we can set other properties the same way. So if we wanted to set the alignment, when I mouse over it, you'll see that there's a property, align, and it has help down there that tells you what you can do with it. So this is really helpful to find out what the properties are of things. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there's all kinds of properties in here. And if you ever need to see what the, their name is to reference it in code, you can just mouse over it right there. Focus, neighbor left. Pretty slick, right? All right, so let's jump back over to our script by clicking here. And uh, when we run this, it'll say no main scene has ever been defined. So we're going to go ahead and hit select, and main will be the scene we defined, and hit open. And just like that, you'll see that Godot Pirate Trader got filled in. And it left this one because we haven't done that one yet. So why did I? change my mind and not do cache first. Well, I'll show you. If I just take cache and try to put it in the text, a lot of you already know what the problem is going to be. I'd say probably better than half of you, I would hope. Uh, but if you're a brand new programmer, haven't done a lot, watch what happens when we try to run this trying to put our cache variable in. We get an error. It really quickly figures it out. And you'll see this red down here. It says invalid set index text on base label with value of type int. In other words, it's expecting text, but we're sending it in integer, so that's not going to work. We can also click here on errors. I thought we could click on errors here in the debugger. And, well, we can see here that it tells us here, you know, what the problem is. And so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the debugger compared uh, maybe to some, uh, you know, Visual Studio, but it, it is adequate. So, anyway, what we can do to fix this is we can just wrap this with a str for string that stands for string and an open and close parentheses and this will convert this integer variable into a string and plug it into text so let's run it again we'll see that we get the 250 here now but we lost our cache label of course because we're just putting the string of cache in here we can add our cache in by just saying quotes cache colon give it a dollar sign and in the quotes so we create a string here and then we can just use a plus to add this string to this string so that's how we can add two strings together so now if we run it we're gonna see that we have cash and 250 and we have our firm name place so this was quite a big first lecture we got our project set up we created a scene we created our main panel here we added a couple of labels named them then we created a script and added it to our main node up here, created our two variables like so, and then we initialized them. We saw first how we could print them out, but then we saw how we can reference objects over here in the scene, and I should say nodes, reference our nodes um, in our scene, and set the text property on them from our variables. So, lot covered in this first video and if you're uh, somewhat of an experienced program you can probably already see that uh, it's easy to get your brain around this engine once you've had someone kind of like point you in the direct, right direction and actually build something out in it so that's why I jump right into it with this so next lecture we're going to continue to build this out we're going to actually create a button uh, so that we can actually see how we can move between cities and represent a using like a list uh, at least the strings of the names of the cities that we would use in our game so we're gonna move pretty quick and we're gonna always be showing you some new structures and, and new designs in this course so look forward to seeing you in the next lecture